Thank you, President Coleman, members of the Board of Regents, distinguished faculty and administration, honored guests, parents, families, friends, and most importantly, the members of the class of 2014. Thank you for having me here this morning. I am truly honored to be a part of your commencement exercises. President Coleman, on the eve of your retirement, I would like to thank you for your tremendous contributions that you have made to the university, to Ann Arbor, and to the state of Michigan. In 12 years, you have more than doubled the university's foundation, overseen the launch of 49 new degree programs, and literally helped change the skyline of this city. I know I speak for many when I say congratulations and thank you for everything that you have done. Now, as I thought about what I wanted to say today, I was reminded of a philosophy professor who asked his students, what would they do if they had just one hour to live? One young woman said she would spend her last hour in the professor's class. He was flattered, of course, and asked her why. And she said, because every hour in your class feels like an eternity. <laughs> I promise I won't speak that long. Actually, it sometimes seems like an eternity since I was a student myself. I very well recall the joy of graduation and recall the promise and excitement I felt about leaving school and starting my career in earnest. The world has changed significantly since then. Fast forward to today, and you, as members of the class of 2014, you are also members of the millennial generation. Demographers like to talk about you as if you are one monolithic mass of humanity. Well, I have two teenagers, one just a year away from starting college himself. So despite the fact that your generation is 80 million strong, making you the largest age grouping in American history, I'm well aware that none of you are alike. For example, not all, all of you are attached to your cell phones 24-7. About one in five of you actually managed to sleep without it. <laughs> and this may come as a shock, but you are not millionaires, not yet. But you are the richest generation in history with a collective spending power and influence of almost a trillion dollars. Not all of you have short attention spans. Let me repeat that. <laughs> Not all of you have short attention spans. In fact, some of you have not sent a text or a tweet in the entire three minutes I've been speaking. <laughs> not all of you speak acronym, HBU, IDK, FTW. For the parents in the audience, that's how about you, I don't know, and for the win. In fact, some of you still use your cell phones to actually make phone calls. OMG. <laughs> Finally, not all, of you not all of you believe you will be famous, but thanks to Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube, some of you already are. <laughs> of course, not everything has changed since I was a student. The skills you have learned here at Michigan, critical thinking, problem solving, communications, analysis, and teamwork, they are just as essential today as they were 30 years ago. But as I'm sure you know these very well, these skills are just the start of what you need for success in today's challenging and fast-paced world. They are the price of admission to today's fast-paced, ever-changing, and ever-global economy. To stand out, to really make a difference, you will also need the kind of skills and qualities that most of us learn from experience over time. Allow me to offer you a half a dozen lessons I have learned since my graduations. Lessons that have been important to me and hopefully will be valuable to you. First, no matter what you choose to do in life, pursue it with passion and hard work. In my experience in school and career, at work and at play, 
There are lots of talented people out there, but talent alone isn't enough. You need something more. One thing that distinguishes those who really make a difference in life, those who really contribute, is passion and hard work. Remember, hard work beats talent if talent doesn't work hard. So don't be content to work around the edges of your profession. Don't wait to be invited to important meetings or asked to work on crucial assignments. Instead, do what it takes to ensure that you're in the middle of your business. Speak up, volunteer, show your enthusiasm, knock on doors. As an employee, your enthusiasm will make your job more interesting and get you noticed. As a manager, your passion will inspire others to join your team and work as hard as you to accomplish great things. Two, conduct yourself with integrity at all times. In every aspect of your life, be honest, be fair, keep your promises, do what's right for your family, for your friends, for your customers, for your clients, for your coworkers, for yourself. Remember, how you get things done is just as important as getting them done. And remember that your integrity is priceless when unquestioned, but worthless or worse when it isn't. Your integrity is one of the most valuable possessions you have. Protect it, cultivate it, wear it with pride. This is a lesson the University of Michigan has taught for nearly 200 years, and we all do well to remember it every day. Three, build relationships. Everything we know about the class of 2014 tells us you are one of the most talented and accomplished classes in this school's history. I have no doubt that many of you will go on to do great things, but remember, no one does great things alone. Success is always a team effort, and as tomorrow's team leaders, you must earn the respect and trust of the people you lead. That means being open, seeking solutions, often listening more than talking, because people don't care what you know until they know that you care. To quote Bo Schembechler, if you do not like people, you will not take the time to get to know them. If you don't know them, you will no have no idea what scares them, what motivates them, and what inspires them. Remember, too, you can't build a relationship only when you need it. Like so many important things in life, strong relationships are built gradually and steadily over time, and there's no better time to start than now. Four, address challenges head on. I'm reminded of the plant manager who asked his lead engineer to explain her hiring process. She said, well, I fill a bathtub with water and offer the applicant a teaspoon, a teacup, and a bucket. Then we ask him or her to empty the tub. I get it, the manager said. A go-getter will use the bucket. No, the engineer said. A go-getter will pull the drain plug. <laughs> if you have an issue in your life, at work or at home, pull the drain plug, address it head on, and with everything you have, address it right away. In my experience, it's much better to get the right people in a room, make a plan, and address that challenge. And remember, hope is not a strategy. Problems don't go away when you ignore them. They tend to get bigger. Five, give something back. As tomorrow's leaders, you have a great opportunity to use your knowledge and passion to build a fulfilling lives for yourselves. But do more than that. Use your talents to help build better lives for others as well. I imagine a few of you, I, we have a few of you that are Spider-Man fans in the crowd. Remember, with great power comes great responsibility. Never underestimate the fact that you can have it, a huge influence on others in actions large or small. I noted earlier how the millennial generation is the largest and richest and most technological generation in American history. What I didn't say is you're also the most inclusive and the most optimistic. Use these traits, along with the unprecedented access to information and global communications that we have today, to challenge convention. More than any other generation in history, you have the power to expose and correct injustice 
to rethink outdated assumptions, to truly make a difference. And remember, while there's certainly a lot wrong in this world today, there's also a lot that's right. Not everything needs changing, some things need protecting. And that can be just as important, challenging, and rewarding as changing the world. I hope that each of you will find something you feel strongly about supporting, that you will make it an important part of your life, and that way you can truly make the world a better place. Finally, the last thing I want to mention on this special day is to remember your family, your friends, and your faith. Keep your friends and family close. I just can't tell you how important they are. They make your life journey truly rewarding. During the good times, you'll have someone to celebrate with, like today. And during the tough times, you'll have someone to turn to for advice, comfort, and love. Remember that this day is almost as important for your parents and loved ones as it is for you. And as I can, I can say as a mom, it might even be more important. Be sure to thank them and tell much you appreciate their support and sacrifice. And remember your faith, whatever it may be. Faith doesn't make things easy, but it can make things possible. So a lot has changed in the 29 years since I sat in your chair, and a lot has stayed the same. It may feel like you have your life mapped out, but I can assure you, things will happen that you cannot even imagine as you sit here today. Be open to opportunities as they occur. Each new experience will broaden your skills and your perspectives. Embrace them, enjoy them, and sometimes you'll have to overcome them. They, but they are the experiences that make you unique and the milestones that will define your life. Again, my sincere thanks for the opportunity to speak to you today. And most of all, congratulations to each and every one of this year's graduates. This is your life, and I'm so excited for each and every one of you. Thank you, and go blue.